Hello friends, let's talk about Jason Bourne, the new movie in the Bourne franchise of movies starring Matt Damon. Well, the franchise mostly stars Matt Damon. There was that one movie starring Jeremy Renner instead. But let's start with a quick history lesson. The Bourne franchise started in 2002 with a Bourne identity, which I still think is a great movie. The Bourne Supremacy and the Bourne Ultimatum, they were also pretty good, and I think Matt Damon has an ability to really sell this character. And Matt Damon continues to be great in this movie, but I get the impression that he's kind of done with the franchise. It started again. Tell me. A new program, Iron Hand. You see, Matt Damon didn't want to appear in the 2012 spin-off Born Legacy movie, even though it would have been such an obvious addition to the movie to have him in it. I think Jeremy Renner did great in the movie, and I really, really liked it. But for being a movie in a Matt Damon-led franchise, it wasn't... Well, it wasn't that. Similarly, Tommy Lee Jones as CIA director Robert Dewey, he's good, but he just doesn't feel inspired. In fact, this might actually be one of the worst I've ever seen him. He just didn't seem to care about anything here apart from just, well, being in the movie and collecting a paycheck. Now, I understand he's getting older, but he just looks tired and doesn't even look like he wants to be there. It's a shame, really. The next bullet's in your head! Similarly, Julia Stiles as Nikki Parsons. She's good, but disappears way too early in the movie. Alicia Vikander as Nikki Parsons, good again, but her character never seems genuine. As for Otto Asando as Craig Jeffers, You've just been hacked. Could be worse than Snowden. Look, I don't even remember seeing him in the movie. He mainly just seems to appear in the background of various scenes that Tommy Lee Jones is in, looking concerned, worried, or confused. Also, despite their characters being very much alive in this universe, there are no signs of David Strathairn, Joan Allen, or Edward Norton. Characters notwithstanding, the problem with this movie is that the story and the script is really, really poor. They said my father was killed by terrorists. He wasn't killed by terrorists, was he? And if that's not enough, the treatment of technology in this movie is abysmal. I mean, really. There are lines like use the SQL to hack the database. People have the program top on their screen because it looks techy, I suppose. But then they manually type in things like run predictive algorithm, which does stuff, I suppose. And ultimately, nothing in this movie actually seems to matter in the end. The movie kind of just ends in a status quo where nothing has changed, really. And I suppose that's kind of the problem. Matt Damon came back to lead in a movie, Paul Greengrass came back to direct and get a writer's credit for once, but it just feels like a cash grab for the both of them. If you can turn your brain off for the roughly two hours of runtime and just enjoy the ride, sure, this movie is absolutely entertaining. But if you do insist on keeping your brain turned on, this movie is ultimately just a disappointment. The original trilogy is a really intelligent post-Cold War spy action thriller, but this movie really just seems to be a rehash of the same formula done without the spirit and intelligence of that original trilogy. I mean, really, just think about it. This is a movie where Jason Bourne is hiding in a third world country. He has flashbacks. His contact is shot in the beginning. The boss of the CIA is evil, and the person in charge of chasing him doesn't want to kill him. There's an asset out to kill him, there's a fight in the crowded space, a car chase, shaky hand-to-hand -hand combat with objects found around them, and so on and so forth. So what it all boils down to in the end is... It's okay, I guess. I'm giving it a weak 6 out of 10. A summer entertainment movie, no more, no less. I know what you did. What was the purpose of your business? Business? <laughs>